Get it, baby. You see it, baby. You see it. You ain't got to talk to him about looking good. You look good. I don't talk to God about that. That's my conversation we have. You know? You look good. I talk to God about it all. So much other stuff, you know? The world in its entirety. Community, cities, nations, people in their mentality. That's the stuff I talk about. Things that makes a difference. Not little petty stuff. And that's not to knock anybody. Don't take one out of saying out of context. What I'm saying to you is, is it's time to grow up. Amen. It's time to level up. Stop coming into services broken down. You know, you need to go. That's not the purpose of coming into a house of God, especially like this. You might go somewhere else and they do broken down stuff, but I don't do broken down stuff. You know what I'm saying? You come in broken down, but I'm going to get you now. Let's go. Point blank. Let's go. Let's get up. Let's move. It's going to be something that is going to pick you up Amen. to move. Because if you really effectively live for God and serve God, your life is not broken down like that, y'all. It's not. It's not broken down like that. Do you go through stuff? Yes. Yeah. But listen to what I just said. You go through it. You go through it. And it just builds your testimony. It just makes God look all the more better. It does. Man, it make it make man. It's like Jesus said when he went to the tomb about Lazarus. He said, I'm glad he did. Glad he did. You would just imagine how we would treat him now. We come in and say something about somebody you, that you know and you love. You glad he did. Oh, good. This ninja crazy. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing going to come out to him. But this ninja crazy. Mm -hmm. We're talking about some glad he did. That ain't no savior. Ain't nobody following him no more, killing, crucifying. That's some of the reason why I believe that they started saying that. See, y'all gotta understand and know this now, because I, I don't, I don't think people really get the book, man. The book is powerful. It's a powerful book. I love that book, man. The book says that the same people that were following him, the multitude of folk that were following him, were the same ones at the foot of the cross saying, that's what they said. So how could you follow him and watch him do everything that he does and see him work miracles, right? Because he wrought miracles, the Bible says. He wrought miracles and there was also signs and there was also wonders that were wrought among the people. So they literally saw him do every bit of this, engaged in it, saw it with their eyes, but yet would say, you know what makes me feel in my heart ain't there? The reason why they did that to him. I love you, ain't there? I do. I love you. Hard headed and all. But I love you. And I'm glad to see you today. I've been missing you. I said, this is why. I believe that the same people that saw him do all this stuff and still yell crucify him was because some of the stuff he said they didn't like, they didn't get it, they didn't understand it, they wouldn't allow themselves to comprehend it. Do you know that there are some people that are not at this building right now because of something I said that they didn't like, they didn't comprehend at the time when I said it. Because they were too calm to catch the spiritual matter that came out my, out my mouth. Lazarus is dead. 
Mary and Martha sent for him at the time that he's dying. They sent for Jesus. Jesus decides to stay where he was for a few more days, which really looks defiant. It doesn't look like it is the appropriate thing for a savior to do. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying to you today. Not everything that God does is going to look right to you. Not everything that I do as a leader is going to look right to you. But if you better not touch it. You better not put your mouth on it. You better not put your hand on it. Lest you touch the Ark of the Covenant and go to sleep, you'll find yourself back out there in the world. Because that's what it's going to do. Because it's going to make you start challenging me, see. It's going to make you start side-eyeing me and everything that I do. And then before you know it, you ain't going to be able to run with me no more. You're going to find yourself out the door. And that's just point blank, period. Why? Do you like to keep people around you that oppose you? I want y'all to answer that. So why do you think I should keep you around me and you opposing me? You're going to find yourself out the door. Okay, so he stays where he is, does not show up for a few days. That looks like it's disrespectful, don't it? If you are sick and they just diagnosed you with a disease and you say, Lord, I need you to heal me of this disease, do you want him to say, hey, I gotta go to this party. I'll catch y'all later. Huh? Or huh? do you want him to heal right then? You want him to heal right then, so to the point that you will start throwing other stuff that you know he done did for people in his face. Well, listen, you heal the woman with the issue of blood, when? Immediately. Huh? Right? Uh, okay, wait just a minute now. The man had leprosy, and the Bible says that you healed his hand. Huh? Immediately? Excuse me just a minute, sir. But uh, you want me to wait a few days? I think that is mighty disrespectful of you. How dare you be a savior, but want me to wait a few days before you heal me? This ninja ain't no Messiah. Now, so see, they became offended. And when they became offended, because the Bible speaks of their offense. Okay, Pastor Lee, y'all think I don't know the book. They think I don't know it, brother, but I love the book, man. The book says, I remember I was in a service, a lady stepped to me, and she said, she put her hand, she touched my arm, she said, ooh, wait a minute. She said, girl, you a walking Bible, that's all I'm going to be till I die, too. And she said, and he said, look, this is the thing about it. They, they, they go, wait a minute, this is how you know they got offended. When he showed up, the first thing they said to him was, if you have that represents offense. Instead of saying, thank you, Lord. You done showed up. Show you right. Got the key in your hand. No, they would talk to smack when they read. If you have been here, my brother wouldn't die. Is what they say. Offense. See? Offended. Your words will give your location every time. Your words don't tell where you at. Your bright line will tell you where you at. Your bright line will tell you where you at. I get sometimes I literally can't hardly even deal with certain I hear people pray. I can't hardly even deal with it because I it be from such a level, you know, I be like, mm, come on. Come on now. Huh? It's your boy with a ram shacking over here, you know. It's your potato, all this stuff over here. And you still you still caught up in you? Huh? You still talking to God about a man? And this ninja over here finna kill one of your children? Huh? Huh? 
Huh? Huh? Excuse me. You talking about putting me and such and such on the prime list? And your kid over here suicidal? Huh? Excuse me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't come in here. That gives your location. That reveals your location. You still talking to God about some blood that's coming from your body. The first year you went through the bleed. The second year you went through the bleed. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you still letting yourself bleed. But you're going to go to these physicians because you don't want to go to the real source. You understand? Because you know if you go to the real source, you're going to get delivered. If you really ain't ready, then let it go. You still want that lifestyle. So your process might have one thing took that long. But it took 12 years. Because you were for 12 years doing what you have to know what they'll be. What you wanted to do. You were still going to do what you want to do. Make God look like he ain't nothing. You a lie. You won't make him look like he ain't nothing to me. You don't look like nothing to me. Before I say he don't look like nothing, you ain't going to convince me that God can't deliver. Man. What I'll Man. say about you is you don't want him Man. to Man. deliver. That's what I'll say. Amen. You ain't going to convince this one. That he can't deliver because I done been delivered. Some of mine was processed and some of it was immediate. It just depended on Man. me. If I was sick of it and I wanted him to get it, I gave it to him. If I just wanted him to just fix me, but I was going to still go back and do it, I had to process out of it. But I didn't let none of that go until I was ready to let it go. Till I was ready to let it go. I determined how long I stayed in my cage. Amen. I said I determined Amen. how long y'all, 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 y'all playing with this. I determined how long I stayed in my cage. The gatekeeper always had access to the key. I just wasn't ready for the gatekeeper to come get me. Mm. Cause sometimes you like what's in your cage. I said sometimes you like what's in your cage. Let's be honest about it. Sometimes you like what's in your cage. Right. Everything they put in your cage ain't bad. Amen. Sometimes you like what's in your cage. Okay, I've heard people say this. They said, damn. They'll complain about the food. But then they'll say, but they give us baked chicken on Sunday. And it'd be good on Sunday. Do you like what's in your cage? Because if you didn't want to be in the cage, you complain about everything. You won't want none of it. But see, sometimes we like what's in the cage. And because we like what's in the cage, we don't want to come out. Your words will locate you. Your words, watch how you pray. From now on, I bet you y'all gonna do that. Watch how you pray. 
how you talk to God.